Good morning. Shabbat Shalom. Turn with me, if you will, to Genesis chapter 11, and we'll begin with verse 27. And it reads, These are the family records of Terah. Terah fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran fathered Lot. Haran died in his native land, in Ur of the Chaldeans, during his father Terah's, or Terah's lifetime. Abraham and Nahor took wives. Abram's wife was named Sarai, and Nahor's wife was named Milcha. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcha and Iska. Sarai was unable to conceive. She did not have a child. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, Haran's son, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they set out together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years and died in Haran. Now, we all know that Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of all the African peoples. Shem was the father of all the Jewish, Hebraic, Israelite, and Arabic peoples. And Japheth is the father of all the Caucasian and Asian peoples. So though Abram, or uh, yeah, Abram in this case, is of the chosen seed of Shem, because Shem was the one that was chosen uh, to carry on the family priestly line. Um, it's actually believed by rabbinic uh, sages that Shem was actually Melchizedek uh, in the account where Abram tithes to Melchizedek after this great battle. So though Abram is of the chosen seed of Shem, Shem's descendants had fallen into polytheistic paganism. So Terah, Haran, Lot, Sarai, Milcah, all these were of the seed of Shem. And Shem, supposedly, was Melchizedek. He was in Salem, and he was the priest of Elion, God Most High. And here, Abram was in the midst of paganism. He was related to Shem. He was related to Melchizedek, if you will, but his family has fallen into paganism. Now, Terah, according to apocryphal literature and uh, according to the Midrash and other rabbinic writings, Terah was an idol maker. He, was, he made idols. That is how he made a living. He made idols and sold them, and that's how he made a living. Now, it's interesting. Teraphim uh, means idol maker. Teraphim. And his name is Terah. So let's move on to Genesis chapter 12, and I'll read the first three verses. The Lord said to Abram, the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. This is the English way of letting the reader know that this is, that in Hebrew, that this is the tetragrammaton. This is the sacred name of of the God of Israel. In Hebrew spelled yud heh vav -Hey, pronounced many different ways. I won't even go into that. But it's letting you know that this isn't Molech or Dagon or Chemosh or Ishtar or any of these other gods, these Canaanite pagan gods that Abram's father Terah was making. This is saying this, this, is, this is the God of, of creation. This is Elyon. This is God Most High. So it says, The Lord said to Abram, Go out from your land, your relatives. It's interesting. Your land. Okay, the land is full of ungodliness and paganism. Right? It's fallen into paganism. Get away from the land. Get away from your relatives who are pagan worshipers, idol worshipers, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. So, I mean, God is asking a lot of Abram. He's saying, just pack up and leave. He didn't even tell Abram where to go. He just said, go. He says, I'll, I'll let you know when you're there. I'll tell you when, when you get there. Verse 2, I will make you a great nation. Now, this is hard. This is hard to imagine that Abram's going to be made a great nation when, it's, when it states 
uh, in the verse that we read in chapter uh, 11, verse 30, Sarah was unable to conceive. She did not have a child. But here, God says to Abram, I will make you a great nation, implying that he is going to allow Sarai to become pregnant at some point. I will bless you, and I will make your name great. Not just, oh, everybody knows Abraham's name. Name also means authority. I will make your authority great. You will have great authority. And what, what, what do we see in the story of Abram in his life? When he becomes Abraham, he amasses great wealth. He amasses uh, a lot of flocks and herds and slaves and household servants, etc. So much so that wherever he goes, the kings, the local tribal kings of those areas are intimidated and frightened by him and eventually say, look, get out of here. You're too big. You're too powerful. You have too great of a name. You have too great of a reputation. You have too much power and authority. You're bigger, bigger, better, greater than us. Leave. So it says, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Notice, I, I, the reason that God is making Abram great is so that he can be a blessing. He's blessed in order to bless other people. Why do we have what we have in our life? Food, clothing, shelter, money. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are to take the blessings God gives to us and give it back. Pay it forward. Give it back to the community. Bless others with it. Verse 3, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This is prophetic. All the peoples will be blessed on the earth will be blessed through you. Ultimately, what's the ultimate blessing through Abraham? Through Abraham's line, Abraham's seed, Abraham's lineage, we get Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, the Redeemer of mankind, the Redeemer of the world. He didn't just come to save Jews and Hebrews and Israelites. He came to see, save the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only unique son, his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So he says, and all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. There comes a time in every person's life where they will have to choose God or the world. Abraham had a choice. Genesis 12, 1. God said, leave your relatives, leave your land, leave your family. He could have said, no, thank you. I'm happy and content right here. So he chose God. He chose to obey God rather than, than just to stay where he was. And everybody has that choice. Are you going to listen to God and obey God even if God tells you to do something weird or strange or something you don't understand? Or he doesn't give you the full picture, the full story, the full explanation of what he wants? Because all he told to Abraham was go. He said, go. Where to, Lord? I'll tell you when you get there. Don't worry about it. Just go. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew. Matthew chapter 10 starting at verse 32. It says, Wherefore, everyone who, will, everyone who will acknowledge me before others, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. Don't assume that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not uh, come to bring peace, but a sword. I came to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother-in-law or her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. As soon as Abram decided to follow El Yon or capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, yud heh vav -Hey, the one and only true God, he immediately drew a line in the sand and by doing this and saying this, see, nobody was monotheistic back then. Everybody was polytheistic, pantheistic. They worshipped a pantheon of gods. Abraham's father was an idol maker. That's how he made his money. And when Abram decided to follow this one true God, he became the first recorded monothe monotheist. In other words, he worshipped one God and one God alone. It's not, you know, see what they did is it was a pantheon and there was a head God over the pantheon. For instance, Baal or Baal was the head pantheon of the Canaanites and under him was, was all these other deities. And everybody worshiped Baal, but they worshiped these other deities too. But, you know, they, so what Abraham did is he just didn't worship one God who was the leader, head God, and then worshiped all the other. He worshiped God alone. 
No other gods. He worship. He gave no other worship to any other gods. It was just God, monotheistic, one and only God. So when he drew this line in the sand, he immediately became enemies with the members of his own household because they worshipped many other gods. And Abraham said, no, there's only one God, and there's only one God that deserves to be worshipped. Now, there is a Hebraic legend, a story regarding Abraham and his father Terah. Terah one day had to go run some errands, do some business, and Abram was left to mind the idol shop. So around him, surrounding him, were all these different idols. So he thought he would teach his father a lesson. He, he took an axe and he smashed all of these other gods, just destroyed all of his father's work. And then the biggest, largest god, idol in other words, that was there in the shop, he put the axe in this idol's hand. And when his father returned, he's like, oh, oh my gosh, what happened? Abraham, what, Abram, what, what, what did you do? What happened? He says, no, father, it wasn't me. I didn't do any of this. He said, what happened was this big God got jealous of all the other gods and destroyed them all. And he says, oh, son, I didn't raise you to be a liar. How dare you lie to me? How dare you lie to me, Abram? You expect me to believe that? He says, well, father, then how how can you worship all these other gods if you yourself know that this idol could not do this? If you know that it's just dead wood and stone and silver and gold and clay. If you know that I'm lying, then you know that these gods are false gods. There's only one God. Interesting story. Interesting legend there. So, going on, it says, The one who loves a father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. The one who loves a son or a daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it, and anyone who loses his life because of me will find it. So Abram chose God above his family, above his land, above his people, above the customs and traditions of his people, and he chose God. Let's turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 16, starting with verse 24. Matthew 16, 24 says, And Yeshua, Jesus, said to his disciples, If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will find it. For what will it be? For what will it benefit someone if he gains the whole world yet loses his own life? Or what will uh, anyone give in exchange for his life? So God is the source of life. He is to be chosen above this world, the things of this world, whether it be occupations, jobs, family, friends, relationships, ethnicity, land. God comes above all of that. And when we try to save our life by making a name for ourselves in this world, by climbing the corporate ladder and making a name or re reputation for ourselves to become rich and famous and involve and immerse ourselves in this world, we lose our lives to what we're working for. We're working for fame. We're working for money. We're losing our lives to that because our lives become obsessed with that and we don't truly live anymore. We don't truly live life anymore. But he says, whoever loses his life, in other words, loses it or gives it to God, will save it, will find it, because the only true life is in the one true God of Israel through a personal relationship, through his son, the Redeemer, the Messiah, Yeshua. Yeshua says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to God but by me. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. It says, therefore, fear the Lord. Again, capital L-O-R-D, yud heh vav -he. Therefore, fear the Lord and worship him in sincerity and truth. Get rid of the gods. Get rid of the teraphim. Get rid of the gods of your fathers. The gods your fathers worship beyond the Euphrates. He's alluding to Terah. He's alluding to Abraham's father. Get rid of the gods your fathers worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. And worship the Lord, Yudhe Vave. 
But if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, choose for yourself today which will you worship, the gods of your fathers worshipped beyond the Euphrates River or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living? As for Joshua says, as for me and my family, we will worship yud heh We will worship the Lord, the one and only true God. He makes that same decision and draws that same line on the sand that Abraham did in Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Let's, let's go back there. I want to read verse 3, or verse 4 rather. Genesis chapter 12. It's going to take me just a second to get there. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 4. So Abram went. Abram went. What is that telling you? That's telling you that Abraham obeyed the Lord. He obeyed God. God said, go. And Abraham went. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him, his nephew. Lot was probably like either a brother or like a son to Abram. Kind of felt responsible. Abram felt responsible for Lot because his father Haran had died. And according to the legends, how he died was that Nimrod, who was the ruler of this, uh, of this time, uh, and Terah was one of the officers in, in Nimrod's court, the official idol maker, that Abram was forced to choose God or to worship Nimrod as God or to worship all these other idols. Abram refused and Nimrod put him in a fiery furnace and he survived the fiery furnace. Haran thought, well, if Abraham survived, I'm going to survive too. But Haran's heart was not totally sold out to God, was not totally pure. So Haran died in the furnace and Abraham lived. So that, again, that's not scripture. That's just tradition. That's just, you know, legends and stories. But perhaps maybe this is why, if this story is true, perhaps this is why that Lot went with Abram because Abram felt responsible for Lot, kind of adopted Lot, kind of took Lot under his, his wing. So he was, depending on how old Lot was, he was either like a brother or like a son to him. So it says, so Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Now let's jump back up to verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Obedience equals blessing. All you have to do is go to Deuteronomy chapters 26 and 27. It talks about and it gives a litany of the blessings that will fall upon you, that will tackle you in the Hebrew, that will overtake you according to the Hebrew language says that these blessings will overtake you when you obey. You will reap the rewards and benefits of the blessings God is waiting and, and itching and can't wait to, to load upon you when you obey his word. But alternatively, if you disobey God's word, there is a litany of curses that's waiting to jump on you, right? So just like Abram, just like Joshua, we all have a choice. God chose us. So in turn, let us choose him. Everybody calls the Jewish people or the Hebrew people the chosen people because God chose them out of all of the nations of the world. But if you ask virtually any Jew, they'll say, no, 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 we're not the chosen people. We're the choosing people because they're the ones who chose God. When God said, will you obey? Will you follow me and obey all my commandments at Mount Sinai? They says, yes, we will. We choose you. We choose you, God. So they call themselves the choosing people. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 41, which, which is the half Torah portion of this Torah portion that we're in. Isaiah chapter 41, beginning with verse 8, it says, But you, Israel my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend. Wow. What a title. What a title. I mean, king, president, ruler, dictator, pretty impressive titles. But man, to me, you can't beat friend of God. Abraham, my friend. God 
calling Abraham his intimate friend. What a title. Verse 9, I brought you from the ends of the earth and called you from the farthest corners. And I said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you. I haven't rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. There's no sense and no use in worshiping these other frail, inferior pantheon of gods. They are lowercase g. They are gods. They are finite. They are fallen, rebellious creations of God. They are B'nai Ha Elohim, the sons of God who rebelled against him and was cast out of heaven and are now pawning themselves off as the gods of the people. They are weak. They are inferior. They have power, but they are nothing compared to God. He is the uncaused caused. He is the infinite creator. He has no beginning. He has no end. He is above. He is the king of kings, Lord of lords, God of gods. And so if, if you become a friend of God like Abraham and you choose God because God has chosen you, he says, hey, don't be afraid because I am your God. I, I, he, he promised, I'll give you strength. I'll help you. And I'll hold on to you with my righteous right hand. We are protected. We, we, we are solid. There's nothing that can come against us because God is our help, our strength, our shield. He's our strength. He's everything that he's our all in all. He's everything that we could ever hope for, ask for, want, or need. I mean, that is amazing. That is amazing. Let's close with a word of prayer. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you that you are the God of gods, that you are infinite, that you're omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, that you are the King of kings. And you are the Lord of Lords, and you are the God above all gods. We thank you that you have chosen us, and we in turn have chosen you. Help us to fall more madly, deeply, and passionately in love with you, and have a more deeper, personal, intimate relationship with you through your Son, the Redeemer, Messiah Yeshua. Help us to be and do all that you want us and have us to be, and help us to bring glory and honor to your name in everything that we say and everything that we do. For we ask and we pray these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the like button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and the notification bell that'll let you know every time I make a new video. And don't forget to share this with a friend. Also, visit our website at abrahamsdescendants.com. Thanks. Shalom. Thanks for watching. Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com. AbrahamsDescendants.com, getting back to the first century in a 21st century way.